This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. Scripps Institution of Oceanography is proud to be part of UC San Diego's founding, which was spearheaded by my famous predecessor, Scripps Director Roger Avell. The segment you're about to see highlights two of Scripps' most important research areas. The first segment outlines our efforts to discover potential new drugs and pharmaceuticals to treat diseases that may be possible as a result of our exploration of microorganisms in the sea. The second segment looks at Scripps Oceanography's use of robotic instruments in the world's oceans to help us examine our climate system and climate predictability. Thank you for spending a few minutes to better understand the important work we are doing here at Scripps Institution of Oceanography and UC San Diego. There have been virtually no new antibiotics discovered since 1990. And the result has been that bacterial infections have become an enormous problem, an epidemic problem. And in one sense or another, 70% of the drugs that we currently use to treat disease are deriving from natural products. A good proportion, maybe a quarter, are natural products directly, but an even larger proportion are drugs that are synthetic in origin, but are mimicking or borrowing uh, uh, are inspired by some structural feature that's been found in a natural product. We've got this whole new resource for these organisms covering 70 percent of the earth never explored before and now we can find new drugs for these infections that have never been seen before. What we're doing here is very early stage uh, we're doing the, the basic discoveries. We're going out in the field and collecting samples by scuba diving, bringing them, them back into the laboratory and then analyzing them for uh, their uh, bioactive compounds. For instance, we'll screen the extracts, we'll extract the uh, oily-like materials and screen them for anti-cancer activity or anti-inflammatory activity, antibiotic activity. We've moved on to a new resource which is renewable and scalable. So these are the microbes, and because these are novel genetically, they produce novel molecules, and those molecules haven't been seen before. They give us an enormous potential for drug discovery, and consistently, we then grow these organisms in significant scale, and we can produce them in the laboratory with no environmental impact whatsoever. I think it's fair to say that between our various groups, we have a dozen or more really exciting compounds that, for which there's patent protection and there's pharmaceutical industry involvement and that we can expect to see in the not so distant future several of these emerge from the academic labs and really go into the clinical setting. So I think we're going to see drugs reach the market in the next 10 years from these efforts. And that's very exciting. The wonder of having a, a fantastic institution of oceanography, an incredibly highly respected school of medicine and school of pharmacy, has created an interchange of ideas and opportunities that I think just don't exist anywhere else. And it changes how we appreciate and understand the goal of our fundamental research. In order to make measurements below the ocean surface before the invention of the profiling float, you had to have a ship. So it just wasn't possible to make measurements at very many places at any one time. The robotic instruments remove that constraint. So now uh, you can put a, f once you've put a float out in the ocean, um, that's going to operate up and down through the water column. It goes down to 2,000 meters, drifts for 10 days, comes up to the sea surface making measurements of temperature and salinity all the way up and then immediately transmits that data by satellite back to the global data centers uh, where it can be made immediately available. And the next technology is spray. That's an underwater glider. It profiles vertically in the same way by changing buoyancy. 
but what it does is it has wings. And so as it's going up and down, it can fly horizontally on this wings in a, in a similar way to gliders in the air fly. What the glider is is essentially a float where we can keep it where we want it. And so what the, really the role of gliders is to provide lots of profiles in certain special places. So all the data that comes back from the glider, it's coming by satellite. We get it, we immediately make it available on the web. And so actually right now the public can, can go onto our website and they can see plots of all the data we're taking. It is, really is science happening right now. Robotics have made it possible for us to make measurements, high quality measurements, any place, any time, without having a ship present. In the history of oceanography, there has been one global ocean survey, and that was collected during the World Ocean Circulation Experiment, which took seven years from 1991 to 1997. And in that seven year period, WOS collected about eight to 10,000 temperature salinity profiles. Well, Argo collects that number every month. And so we get the equivalent of a WOS survey of the ocean with frankly better global coverage every month than we got in that seven year period. And I think that's the, the, the sense in which Argo has revolutionized not, not necessarily oceanography, but global ocean observation. We had the first glider observations of an El Nino off the California coast. And so because the gliders were in the water working all the time, we saw how the El Nino got here, how the water got warmer. And we've already described it and we've already submitted a paper on our findings of how the gliders observed the El Nino. My goal is to have a, a network of sprays uh, really all around the, the whole country's coast with my first goal to get sprays or underwater gliders in general along the west coast of the U.S. and basically have an observing system off the coast that provides us continuous high quality observations of the physical environment. And so I think that is the wave of the future is to make our data widely available uh, right away. The history of physical oceanography is tied entirely to the technology advances that have occurred in oceanography over the last few decades. And that's where having a high-tech uh, and, and savvy university like this one really makes a difference.